Hello everyone, my name is Theodore Alao and I'm the founder of Unconventional Ventures. Today I'm super honored and excited to be able to spend a few moments with you and talk about diversity challenges as it relates to building ethical and inclusive AI. Our company was founded with the belief that anyone should have a chance to try and succeed, regardless of their demographics and regardless of their social circles. We partner with a variety of startups and corporates around the world. We speak at events such as this one, and we also have a podcast called One Vision that you can find on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Now let's start off with something that is a hot topic of late. Toilet paper. Who notices when you run out of toilet paper in your house? I don't know about you, but in my house, it's always me. Same thing with milk, other essential items. It's always me who notice that we're running out of these items. But in 80% of water-deprived households, women and girls have more than the essential items such as toilet paper to worry about. They also carry the burden of water collection. That's right, something that a lot of us take for granted. So much so that they spend two and a half months per year to fetch clean, drinkable water. And we wonder why two thirds of illiterate adults around the world are women. They simply have so much work to do. On average, women spend seven more years the men on unpaid labor. You know, the laundry, preparing food, doing dishes, getting kids to school, putting them to bed. All of that add up. Seven years is enough for a bachelor degree, plus a master, plus one extra year for you to do anything that you want. No wonder one in four women reported that family responsibilities have impacted their work. Now, that's before COVID. I don't even want to imagine what the numbers look like right now. On average, women spend 12 years doing caregiving, not just taking care of their kids, but also taking care of the aging parents, their loved ones, because women are primarily the caregiver of their family. If you put dollars and cents next to it, it amounts to over $10 trillion globally that women are doing unpaid caregiving work. And there's over 22% of employment gap between a man and woman with at least one child. <laughs> and not to mention the gender pay gap, 98 cents on the dollar. And what about the motherhood penalty, $16,000 per year? I experienced that myself. I had two children. Not only had I have a hard time coming back to work full time, my pay got cut because people wondered, can you actually work after you have a baby? Mm, yeah, I didn't have a brain surgery. I was functioning properly. I'm perfectly fine. And throughout the last few months, we found out that a lot of things that a few of us took for granted is a privilege. For example, flexible work arrangement. It's not a right for a lot of people. KSU, FSU, for example, they have various policies that are barring the employees from working at home full time while taking care of their children. Now, when asked what happens when schools are closed or when the kids are doing virtual learning at home. And we wonder why women researchers are publishing less since the beginning of the pandemic. We started hearing horror stories about women who are being asked to either resign or get fired. What about the ones who made it? The ones that have had amazing accomplishments the last few months? Let's take a look. Students at MIT selected a black woman as the president of the undergraduate association for the first time in the history of MIT, 159 years. But yet you look at the article, her name is not on the headline. Same as Amazon Shake Up, they added the first black executive to Jeff's elite in a circle, but her name again was not on the headline. Japan appointed their first female central banker executive director. Again, the focus is on the fact that she's a woman, but not 
on the rest of her as a person. American Express made history with the first black woman on its executive committee. And you can see on the article, her name again is not there. And that's a pet peeve of mine because representation matters. If you don't have her name, what happens to all the automated systems that look for their names? Do they not exist? What happens to all the people that are relying on social media, digital media, to look for news to see who's up and coming? And we wonder why VC investment, there's so little of that that goes to all female founder team. Some people have asked, well, you know, maybe they are not as active and present in the digital space. Well, when we're all socially isolated and digital is the only venue that we can have to reach out to everyone else, what can we do more? What can we do better? Data matters and how it gets represented matters. We need to have a fairer world and it's possible. MIT recently had to pull off a huge data set because it was teaching AI systems to use racist terms. Google AI thinks that women wearing masks have mouths covered with duct tape. And then recently an, an algorithm determined the UK students grades and of course chaos. Why does that keep happening? We need to do better and we have a chance to shape a different future, a better future, a better future where you have a fairer representation of men and women in the emerging tech industry. Right now is very lopsided. A future where we have more diverse ideas, diverse opinion, people from different backgrounds, so that we don't have to keep looking for quote unquote fresh ideas from the same homogeneous group. We must solve for digital divide. There are millions of households and millions of school children that do not have access to the internet. In the new digital era, where we are right now, broadband access should not be a privilege. We need to create different pathways for education, for children to have different ways of getting a tech career. One size does not fit all. We need to find ways to reskill and upskill the workforce. There are over 30 million people in the United States today that are unemployed. Many of them have lost jobs that are not coming back. How do we train them and reskill them so that they can adapt to the workforce of the future, so they can learn new skills? We have gained an extra 30 years of healthy living because of longevity, because of advances in technology. One size fits all education. The old ways of learning things does not work anymore. And in, we need to create returnship programs to support new parents, to support mothers. The US is the only OECD country that does not have paid maternity leave. We need to do better. So women don't have to choose between taking care of their children, keeping them safe versus putting food on the table. We need to create a more open culture, a flex work environment where parents are not judged. We need to provide them with the support so they can do their work while raising their children. We need more diversity in leadership because our kids need someone else to look up to, different role models. We need a diverse leadership team that represents the society as we have today. Diversity inclusion is not a corporate slogan or a one-time project. It's not check the box program. And no action is too small because when you uplift women, you uplift the entire community. So be part of that change and keep human in the loop. Thank you so much.